And we are now joined by our uh, guest, Piotr Kaczynski, EU expert from uh, the Geremek Foundation in Warsaw, um, specializing in the decision making process of the European Union and the debate on the future of the Union itself. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good evening. So we've been looking at some of these predictions when it comes to who is going to take uh, the jobs. Um, I wanted to start with uh, the idea of the supergroup. We know that there could be potentially something forming of the sort. Do you think that it would actually have an influence on uh, the makeup of the Commission? Not really. Uh, the uh, so-called supergroup um, would effectively, if it ever emerged, uh, compose, be, be, would, would be composed of uh, today's ECR ID and this uh, grouping of about 50 MEPs who are coming from far-right backgrounds, but they do not uh, have yet a home in the European Parliament. Um, just to name a few, the German AFD, the Hungarian Fidesz, the Polish Confederacja, uh, all these politicians who were just elected into the European Parliament are not grouped in either uh, ECR or ID. Uh, so there is a big question out there because uh, just yesterday there was a, a meeting in Brussels, very private meeting between Mr. Salvini of Italy, um, Mr. Wilders of, um, of the Netherlands and uh, Marine Le Pen, who were plotting apparently about the future of uh, of the right side of the uh, of the European Parliament, but I don't think that they came to any convincing conclusions, rather than uh, to attract new members into their own group, the ID. So I do not believe that any big far right group will emerge, and even if it did, uh, it wouldn't be a threat to the majority that uh, von der Leyen has, uh, that is composed of four groups uh, that are uh, centrist, the EBP, or on the center right, center left, the Social Democrats, and then on the left side, uh, the Greens, and in the center also, Renew Europe. So there are four groups that are uh, supporting von der Leyen before she uh, spoke and delivered her new program of her future commission. And that's point number one. Point number two, uh, how could the far right disrupt the College of Commissioners if it would be if there were uh, many far-right politicians inside the Commission. How many EU governments will send far-right politicians into the Commission? I would be expecting very few of those. Very few. So it looks pretty certain that um, Portugal's Antonio Costa, uh, Malta's Roberta Metzola, of course, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, and Kaya Kallas, uh, should be the uh, top players there in the commission. You think that's about right? I think this this sounds like a very premature uh, a compromise that emerged and everybody is just nodding to those four names. Um, I would like to point out that, yes, they are clearly a front runners. And I was just uh, yesterday in Brussels, I'm still in Brussels, uh, talking to some senior people and everybody seems to be very con convinced that the, these four are uh, are decided. It will be very fast and smooth uh, process of agreeing to those four names, and everybody will be happy. So, where do you uh, think just, this uh, assumption comes from? Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, uh, I think this comes from the idea that uh, that the union is in big crisis. The internal and external crises are just too big to ignore, and we cannot spend too much time just dwelling on who should be uh, our who should provide the leadership that the union uh, needs and uh, just to jump on board with with this uh, with those nominations that clearly as your report just indicated are not 100% crystal clear uh, the biggest questions are not exactly about von der Leyen uh, this is uh, probably a bit uh, too much that uh, your active article speculated uh, but uh, that of Mr. Costa. Uh, in Lisbon, the, the proceedings have been going on for many months, uh, and Mr. Costa has been involved or not, but uh, clearly was not cleared of those, uh, of those allegations. Uh, so he has a deadline to be cleared of those allegations, and the deadline is end of June. 
and uh, hopefully he can clear himself out. Otherwise, there might be some people uh, raising some eyebrows uh, to actually uh, choose a, as a person a candidate uh, or, or as a as a person to be the president of the of the of the European Council who would need to step uh, down in in a, in a couple months or a couple of years down uh, down the road. This is not something that anybody would uh, would welcome, and it's not that there's no other uh, alternatives to Mr. Costa on the left side um, of the spectrum. Uh, when it comes to the chief diplomat, Kaya Kallas comes up, her name. Um, of course, here in our part of the world, I think we commend such a step, and I think everybody would fully support that. Um, she's also on Russia's uh, most wanted list. Is that a good person for a chief diplomat of the European Union? Yeah, I mean, it's not uh, for me to say if it's a it's a good or bad uh, candidate. Of course, we should we should judge politicians by their performance, not ahead of time. Kaya Kalas clearly, as Prime Minister of of uh, Estonia, has proven herself and uh, uh, to be to be a a person who uh, who defends the values that uh, that are uh, very dear and very important and have to be defended. Um, uh, so to have a hawk uh, like that. Uh, in the seat of the uh, of the uh, of the high representative responsible for for, for unions foreign policy uh, is potentially a a little a little uh, a little uh, maybe off your usual suspect that you need a diplomat who's careful and uh, who is willing to 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 negotiate. But uh, at the same time, we should maybe escape this uh, logic of talking hawkish or uh, or not. Uh, and and focus on the fact that she has the know-how. She understands the logic of uh, uh, of uh, the Moscow politics uh, and uh, and uh, also Brussels politics and transatlantic politics. So uh, so she's a smart politician uh, who can bring um, uh, added value uh, to the table uh, of uh, of the Foreign Affairs uh, Council and be uh, potentially, hopefully, more successful. Uh, in uh, in foreign affairs than the outgoing uh, union leadership. If it were to happen, it would be an interesting choice, especially uh, in, in regards to what you just said, Piotr, about how she is at the front line. She she knows how Russia works, She and she would definitely understand the, the mechanics behind it. And now I wanted to ask a question about the leading uh, lady, Ursula von der Leyen, and another term for her. We spoke about um, Ursula von der Leyen with one of our experts in days past following the European parliamentary elections, and um, that that very expert pointed out and said that Ursula von der Leyen uh, has a chance not only because of the EPP but also because a lot of uh, EU members believe that she's a unifying force, especially during the time of crisis, such as the one you just mentioned only a minute ago. What is your opinion on this? I do agree. Uh, von der Leyen post-elections, uh, she looks very much uh, as unescapable uh, choice. Uh, she uh, She is... Uh, she is becoming the embodiment of the European Union in the sense of EU facing uh, the uh, multiple crises out there. Uh, she's a doctor in times of need for uh, for COVID. She was a minister of defense in times of uh, building and developing the European defense vis-a-vis -vis the challenges uh, coming from the East. Uh, she is a, a female leader, a first female leader, female leader uh, of the commission uh, who is perfectly fit for the job uh, and uh, and she has performed so well that uh, the praises the praises coming towards uh, von der Leyen are coming from different uh, uh, angles uh, they come from uh, social democrats uh, sanchez uh, is uh, clearly a uh, a von der Leyen uh, um, uh, um, party member, so to speak, but also Meloni is in this party, Tusk is in this party. Uh, so these people are coming from different political families and they all are supportive of Ursula von der Leyen. And if you talk to uh, mid-career mid diplomats, uh, they, they are crystal clear it's going to be Ursula von der Leyen no matter what. Uh, uh, EPP has scored very well four political groups uh, uh, today support her uh, she has on top, without be asking support of the Greens and of Meloni, 
uh, therefore, without doubt, she is going to be uh, the, the European Council's choice. Uh, I've heard just yesterday also that Tusk will be the person who will deliver in the European Council uh, the candidacy of, uh, of Ursula von der Leyen and, uh, and the EPP, uh, that is the biggest force in the European Council, will uh, safeguard another top job out of top jobs uh, for uh, one of their own. It'll be interesting to see these things develop and see who's actually going to take a seat. Uh, Piotr Kaczynski, you expert from Geremek Foundation, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me.